today in this part of lecture we will be studying biogeochemical cycles in detail a biogeochemical cycle or cycling of substances or substance turnover is the cycling pathway by which chemical elements required by life moves through both biotic that is biosphere and abiotic that is lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere compartments of earth a cycle is a series of change which comes back to starting point and which can be repeated the term biogeochemical tells us that biological geological and chemical factors are involved the plants and animals that live and then die are the bio part the earth that they decompose into comprises the geo part and the process by which organic matter returns to the chemical elements in the earth is explained by chemical part these chemical nutrients include carbon oxygen nitrogen phosphorus sulfur and water these elements cycle in either a gas cycle or a sedimentary cycle in a gas cycle elements move through the atmosphere in a sedimentary cycle elements move from land to water to sediment carbon cycle nitrogen cycle and oxygen cycle are examples of gas cycle whereas phosphorus cycle and sulfur cycle are examples of sedimentary cycle now we will be studying various cycles in detail first cycle taken into consideration is nitrogen cycle nitrogen is one of the very important element on earth as it is a component of amino acids proteins vitamins dna rna etc earth's atmosphere contains around 78% nitrogen however plants and animals cannot use it directly in its elemental form from the atmosphere this elemental form of nitrogen is used by plants only after it gets converted into inorganic nitrogen containing compounds like nitrites that is no2 minus nitrates that is no3 minus ammonia that is nh4 plus nitrous oxide that is n2o nitric oxide that is no or inorganic nitrogen that is n2 these conversions are done by various kinds of bacteria and other microorganisms thus the nitrogen cycle is the process by which nitrogen is converted in its various chemical forms by biological and physical process nitrogen cycle consists of various steps such as nitrogen fixation nitrogen assimilation ammonification nitrification denitrification and sedimentation now we will be elaborating nitrogen fixation in detail nitrogen fixation is the process by which free nitrogen of atmosphere is converted into biologically available form of nitrogen there are four ways for nitrogen fixation number 1 physiochemical fixation during lightning and at the time of electric discharge in clouds the nitrogen of atmosphere combines with oxygen and produces different kinds of nitrogen oxides these oxides of nitrogen get dissolved in water to form nitrates and other nitrogenous compounds this can be summarized as shown here n2 plus o2 combine to give 2no 2no plus o2 combine to give 2no2 2no2 plus h2o combines to give hno2 plus hno3 3no2 plus h2o combines to give 2hno3 plus no 2hno2 plus caco2 combines to give cano3 twice plus co2 
plus H2O. Second one is biological nitrogen fixation. In this kind of fixation, atmospheric nitrogen gets converted into nitrites and nitrates by free living bacteria, symbiotic bacteria and by blue green algae. Free living bacteria such as azobacter, clostridium etc fix nitrogen of atmosphere in the soil by combining the gaseous nitrogen of atmosphere with the hydrogen that is obtained from respiratory pathway to form ammonia. Symbiotic bacteria like rhizobium living in the root nodules of legumes cannot fix the nitrogen solely. These bacteria invade the roots or leaves and stimulate the formation of root nodules or leaf nodules which are kind of harmless overgrowth of cells as a tumor. The union of this bacteria and nodule cells are able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen under low oxygen condition and nitrogenase enzyme reduces nitrogen to ammonia. Certain species of lichens also have nitrogen fixing ability. Third one is industrial nitrogen fixation. Under great pressure at a temperature of 600 degree Celsius, an iron catalyst, hydrogen and atmospheric nitrogen combine to form ammonia. Fourth one is combustion of fossil fuels. Automobile engines and thermal power plants release various nitrogen oxides. Now we will be looking into nitrogen assimilation. Inorganic nitrogen in form of nitrites, nitrates and ammonia is taken up by plants from soil. Plants utilize these inorganic nitrogenous compounds to produce organic nitrogenous compound like amino acids, proteins, enzymes, nucleic acid, chlorophyll etc. Animal consumes plants and thus they get nitrogenous organic compound in their body. Now we will be studying ammonification. The dead organic remains of plants and animals as well as excreta of animals are decomposed by number of microorganisms that convert the organic nitrogen into ammonium. In decomposition, protein, urea, uric acid, etc. of animals get converted into the ammonia in the presence of ammonifying bacteria such as Bacillus ramosus, Bacillus vulgaris and Bacillus mycoides. Nitrification. In this step, ammonia which was produced in previous step get converted into nitrite and nitrates. Nitromonas and nitococcus bacteria carry out conversion of ammonia to nitrites. The equation for this reaction is 2 NH3 plus O2 combined in the presence of nitromonas and nitococcus to give 2 NO2 minus plus 2 H plus plus 2H2O plus energy. Conversion of nitrites to nitrate is brought about by bacteria like nitrobacter and penicillium that is a fungus. 2NO2 plus O2 in presence of nitrobacter combine to form 2NO3 minus plus energy. Denitrification. In this step, Denitrifying bacteria like Pseudomonas, Micrococcus denitrificans, Thiobacillus denitrificans, etc., converts ammonia, nitrites, and nitrate into molecular nitrogen. The reaction can be summarized as nitrate is converted to nitrite, nitrite in turn is converted to nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is converted to nitric oxide and finally nitric oxide is converted to nitrogen. Sedimentation. Nitrates present in soil sometimes gets locked up in the rocks. This is called the sedimentation of nitrogen. 
during weathering nitrates is released by conversion into nitrogen thus nitrogen is fixed by microbes fixed nitrogen is absorbed by plants via food chain organic nitrogen enters into consumers and all dead remains is acted upon by decomposer and again nitrogen gets back to atmosphere in its molecular form in this way nitrogen cycle keeps on operating in cyclic manner now we will be studying second cycle that is phosphorus cycle phosphorus is a major constituent of life sustaining biomolecules biological membranes energy rich compounds that is atp and nucleic acids in addition many animals also need large quantities of this element to make shells bones exoskeleton and teeth it also functions as a buffering agent in maintaining acid base homeostasis in human body the phosphorus cycle describes the movement of phosphorus through lithosphere hydrosphere and biosphere it is a sedimentary cycle now we will be studying sources of phosphorus due to rains and weathering phosphates from rocks leach to soil much of the leached phosphate from soil runs off to ocean due to rain and soil erosion and thus makes phosphorus pool in the ocean fate of phosphorus in soil and ocean in soil phosphates reacts with iron oxide aluminum hydroxides clay surface organic particles and become incorporated the phosphorus pool of soil is in four different forms which are number 1 inorganic phosphorus available directly for plant number 2 organic phosphorus which is not available to plant directly number 3 adsorbed phosphorus which is phosphate bound chemically with soil particles that is unavailable to plants readily number 4 mineralized phosphorus which is unavailable to plants readily now we will be discussing mineralization and immobilization mineralization is conversion of organic phosphorus to h2po4 minus or hpo4 minus by microbial activity slow desorption over a long period of time makes little adsorbed phosphorus available for plants primary mineral phosphorus like iron phosphate and mineral phosphate become plant available phosphate due to weathering certain microbes and symbiotic fungi at plant roots create acidic condition due to which phosphorus gets available to plant from its minerals water runoff and soil erosion water carries away dissolved phosphorus from applied manure and fertilizers as well as particulate that is soil bound phosphorus which gets trapped in sedimentary rocks soil erosion control decreases phosphorus losses by slowing water flow over soil surface and increasing infiltration now we will be detailing phosphorus cycling between biotic and abiotic components plants absorb phosphorus from soil and via food chain it becomes integral part of different trophic level consumers both producers and consumers dies and decomposition of both submit phosphorus back to soil similarly in the ocean phosphorus from water is passed to phytoplankton to zooplankton's and from zooplankton's to fishes via food chain excreta and death of marine organisms return phosphorus to water small amount of phosphorus is returned to lithosphere from ocean by marine birds excreta 
known as guano which contains plenty of phosphorus. The deposited sediment of phosphorus remains out of circulation and makes cycle imperfect. Now, we will be elaborating the third cycle that is sulphur cycle. Sulphur is an essential element of biological molecules in small quantities. It is a component of three amino acids which are cysteine, cysteine and methionine. Besides that, certain vitamins and enzymes also contain sulphur. The sulphur cycle is the collection of processes by which sulphur moves to and from minerals that is including the waterways and living system. Sources of Sulphur Sulphur is mainly found on earth as sulphates in soil, water and rock or as free sulphur. Rain water running over the rock causes leaching of sulphur from rock. This leached sulphur by rain water gets soaked in soil whereas some amount run off to lake, river and ocean. In ocean it may get locked in sedimentary rocks. The largest physical reservoir of sulphur is the earth's crust where sulphur is found in gypsum that is CaSO4 and pyrite that is FeS2. Atmosphere contains sulphur dioxide that is SO2 and methane sulfonic acid that is CH3SO3 minus. Volcanic activity releases some hydrogen sulphide into the air. Now we will be studying cycling of sulphur between sulphates and sulphides. After death of autotrophs and heterotrophs, their decomposition takes place and in this process, biologically incorporated sulphur is mineralized by bacteria. Sulphur is directly reduced to hydrogen sulphide by desulfovibrio and aerobacter SO42- plus 2H plus combines to yield H2S plus 2O2. Thus, higher concentration of H2S starts to build up in anaerobic or deeper portion of aquatic ecosystem. A part of H2S is oxidized to soluble sulfates by sulfur bacteria like Theobacillus and Bagiatoa. 6 CO2 plus 12 H2S combines to give C6H12O6 plus 6H2O plus 12S. Some amount of sulphur remain in deep sea. From sea, it gets back to land via food chain, sea sprays and due to geological upheavals. The SO2 and SO3 are released into the atmosphere by burning of fossil fuel. When there is rain, these SO2 and SO3 gets dissolved in rain water forming sulfurous acid that is H2SO3 and sulfuric acid that is H2SO4 respectively. These fall on earth as acid rains. On reaching soil, sulfurous acid and sulfuric acid form sulfates with metals. Sulfates are in turn used by plants and animals and thus sulphur cycle keeps operating. Moving ahead, we will now be studying oxygen cycle. Oxygen is a basic element of life and it is part of several essential biomolecules. It is one of the major gaseous component of atmosphere and in form of O3 that is ozone it provides protection of life. It constitutes about 21% of the atmosphere and is ubiquitous. The oxygen cycle involves 
movement of oxygen and its storage in different forms as well as its oxidative reactions with various elements. This cycle is important because it helps to shield earth from majority of harmful ultraviolet that is UV radiation turning it to harmless heat before it reaches earth's surface. Sources of oxygen. Oxygen is stored in three main reservoirs that is the atmosphere, the total content of biological matter within the biosphere and lithosphere. Most of this oxygen is not on its own or free moving, but part of chemical compounds such as silicates or oxides and as water in the oceans. An additional source of atmospheric free oxygen comes from photolysis, whereby high energy UV radiation break down atmospheric water and nitrous oxide into component atoms. The free hydrogen and nitrogen atoms escape into space leaving O2 in the atmosphere. Cycling of oxygen. Plants mark beginning of oxygen cycle as they are able to use the energy of sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates and oxygen in a process called photosynthesis. Animals form the other half of oxygen cycle as they take in oxygen through process of respiration and release carbon dioxide that is CO2 into atmosphere. Fuels need oxygen for combustion so they take oxygen and release CO2 into atmosphere as a byproduct along with other gases like N2 etc. Oxygen is also cycled between biosphere and lithosphere. Marine organisms in the biosphere create calcium carbonate shell material that is CaCO3 which is rich in oxygen. When the organism dies, its shell is deposited on the shallow sea floor and buried over time to create the limestone sedimentary rock of lithosphere. Weathering processes initiated by organisms can also free oxygen from lithosphere. Plant and animals extract nutrient minerals from rocks and release oxygen in the process. The lithosphere mostly fixes oxygen in minerals such as silicates and oxides. When oxygen bearing mineral is exposed to elements, a chemical reaction occurs that wears it down and in the process produces free oxygen. Failures in the oxygen cycle within the hydrosphere can result in development of hypoxic zones. Now we are incorporating into our study of biogeochemical cycles, the water cycle that is also known as hydrologic cycle. Water is indispensable for life and it can be said that it is the matrix of life. It is component part of all living tissue. 60 percent to 90 percent of the organism's body weight is due to water. It remains incorporated in biomolecules of the body. It also acts as solvent for many organic and inorganic components. It is required for thermoregulation, for transportation of molecules and in hydrolytic digestion of nutrients. The water cycle also known as hydrologic cycle or the H2O cycle describes continuous movements of water on, above and through the earth via the land, atmosphere and oceans. The water cycle figures significantly in the maintenance of life and ecosystems. Studying the distribution of water. Water covers 71 percent of earth's surface. On earth, 96.5 percent of total water is found in oceans and seas. 1.7 percent as groundwater, 
1.7% in glaciers and in the ice caps at polar region. A small fraction is found in other large water bodies and 0.001% in the air as vapor and clouds and precipitation. Water cycling. The three major steps of water cycling are precipitation, evaporation and condensation. In this regard, there are two types of water cycles. Number one, global water cycle and number two, biological water cycle. Now, we will be glancing global water cycle. The sun, which drives the water cycle, heats water in oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, etc. and eventually water precipitates on both lithosphere and hydrosphere. Every year, 4.46 into 10 raised to 20 gram water precipitates on the earth. Of this amount, 0.99 into 10 raised to 20 gram falls on land and 3.24 into 10 raised to 20 gram falls on ocean surface. Evaporated water from the hydrosphere forms cloud. Clouds blow over the land and sea as rain, snow, hail and sleet. Some water content of the rain percolate through soil, natural springs, man-made wells and pumps brings groundwater to surface water. Again by evaporation and precipitation cycle gets repeated. A major part of water is locked up in earth's crust and it is only released in small quantities during volcanic eruptions. Same way, the large store in polar ice caps has little effect on hydrological cycle due to negligible evaporation from them. Studying another type of water cycle that is biological water cycle. In terrestrial ecosystem, source of water for autotrophs is underground water. Roots of plant absorb this water from soil and use it in different physiological processes. In aquatic life, plants and animals get water from aquatic body in which they live. In terrestrial ecosystem, animals get water from water reservoirs like rivers, ponds, lakes, etc. Whereas, humans get water from rivers and from groundwater by making tube wells and pumps. Plants return water to environment by transpiration. Animals return water to air by transpiration, urination and excretion. Mammals excrete water as sweat which evaporates. These vaporized water from plants and animals precipitates eventually. Thus, in these ways, biological water cycle remains operative. Now, we will be studying the last and the most important cycle that is carbon cycle. Carbon is considered as building block of life as it is main component of biological compounds and many minerals. Carbon is the best for joining of elements to form compounds necessary for life such as sugar, starch, fats and proteins. The carbon cycle is the biogeochemical cycle by which carbon is exchanged among the biosphere, pedosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere of earth. Sources of carbon. The major source of carbon is the atmospheric carbon dioxide that is CO2. CO2 dissolved in water bodies of the earth and methane. Atmosphere contains 700 into 10 raised to 9 metric tons of carbon dioxide while water contains 35,000 into 10 raised to 9 metric tons of carbon dioxide. On an average, there is about 6 tons of carbon as carbon dioxide over each acre of earth. Movement of carbon in the ecosystem. Photosynthesis and respiration are the two main biological processes which count for biological cycling of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Photosynthesis All green plants, algae and phytoplanktons are able to carry out photosynthesis. 
in this complex process after series of chemical reactions simple sugar such as glucose is produced oxygen is produced as by product the process of photosynthesis can be summarized as co2 plus h2o plus radiant energy combines to give c6h12o6 plus o2 the simple sugar is then converted to other biomolecules such as starch fat protein cellulose etc by different complex biochemical pathways so it can be said that all the matter of the plant ultimately is produced as a result of photosynthesis respiration the process of eating and being eaten transfers carbon from plant to successive trophic levels in food chain carbon in the form of different biomolecules get stored in animals and some amount of these biomolecules are utilized for cellular respiration in rest of it again count for biomass which may be consumed by animals of next trophic level in food chain the process can be summarized as follows o2 plus carbohydrate combines to yield energy plus water plus co2 in addition to this decomposing microorganisms break down dead material which releases carbon that goes back to carbon cycle some amount of carbon returns to environment in form of methane cycling of carbon from fossil fuels the direct emissions from burning fossil fuels transfers carbon from geosphere to atmosphere under certain conditions dead tissue may undergo partial decomposition this causes formation of coal from plants and formation of natural gases and petroleum from marine organisms coal natural gas and petroleum when burnt in automobiles factories and power houses produce co2 that is added to atmosphere carbon tied up in fossilized organisms remains out of circulation for thousands of years fate of carbon dioxide in oceans and seas oceans contain the largest quantity of actively cycled carbon in the world carbon dioxide and other atmospheric gases dissolve in surface water dissolved gases are in equilibrium with the gases in the atmosphere carbon dioxide in atmosphere reacts with water to form weak acid that is carbonic acid h2o plus co2 combine to give h2co3 that is carbonic acid H2CO3 that is carbonic acid is then dissociated into H+ plus, that is hydrogen ion plus HCO3- minus, that is bicarbonate ion HCO3- minus, that is bicarbonate ion further dissociates into hydrogen ion that is H+ plus, plus CO3- minus, that is carbonate ion the carbonic acid causes weathering of rocks as rocks get eroded the clay ions like calcium magnesium and carbon in form of hco3 minus gets liberated from rocks sea animals that have calcium carbonate shell like clay clam cowry etc possess ability to create shell from these dissolved ions in sea water the reaction can be summarized as 2 hco3 plus calcium ions react to give caco3 that is calcium carbonate plus h2o plus co2 thus co2 and h2o unite to form h2co3 and thus cycling goes on and on when organisms die their shells get accumulated as the limestone some of this carbon is returned to atmosphere via metamorphosis of this limestone due to heat and pressure in the deep region of the sea thus 
carbon dioxide is liberated from the limestone by this reaction. Calcium carbonate that is CaCO3 reacts with silicon dioxide that is SiO2 to give calcium silicate that is CaSiO3 plus CO2 that is carbon dioxide. CO2 formed in this way again contribute to formation of carbonic acid. Thus, CO2 passes through many phases and remain in cyclic utilization in seas. The recycling of carbon is essentially a self-regulating mechanism. Now, we will conclude the entire biogeochemical cycles and all the various cycles that we have studied. Water, nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, sulfur and oxygen are the building blocks of life and they continually cycle through earth's system. The atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere and lithosphere on time scales that range from a few days to millions of years. Biogeochemical cycles are components of broader cycle that govern the functioning of planet earth. These cycles are innately complex in nature and are pathways for transport and transformation of matter. They facilitate transfer of matter from one form to another and from one location to another on planet earth. 